Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 20th annual Crest Jane Goodall Science Symposium. My name is Kathy Ludwig. I'm the superintendent of the Westland Wilsonville School District. This is our first fully digital science fair, and it's been an incredible success. The creativity of our students has been absolutely remarkable. Our students brought a new level of thoughtfulness and diligence to their science fair projects this year and overcame obstacles to complete their investigations. So many projects took place at home, in a garage, outside in the garden, in a field, or even over Zoom. Students embraced technology and refused to be limited by the dimensions of their screens. So congratulations to our students. This evening's virtual science symposium has been made possible by the support from the Wilsonville High School Broadcast Network who are producing our live show. And I, would begin, I wanna begin by thanking WBN. We are grateful for your expertise and time in televising this event so we could have it. Our science symposium this year includes 100 student participants from all of our campuses. On Saturday, March 6th, students interviewed with more than 40 judges, professional engineers and scientists from all over the country. Once again, our students astounded their judges and impressed their teachers and our community. And now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening, Dr. Avilash Kramer. Dr. Kramer is an alumnus of the Westland Wilsonville School District, attending Willamette Primary School and was salutatorian of the Westland High School class of 2010. Dr. Kramer was also a competitor at our own science symposium years ago. Dr. Kramer's project spanned the breadth of engineering from his first one on improving the sewing machine to his best of fair work on nitrate sensing in river sediment. After graduating from West Lynn, Dr. Kramer attended Brown University where he studied physics. After completing his degree, Dr. Kramer was awarded a Fulbright scholarship to India he worked for a year at the Aravind Eye Hospital in Southern India to design, build, and test low-cost, portable ophthalmology tools for use in mobile clinics. Dr. Kramer subsequently pursued a PhD in medical engineering and medical physics in the Harvard-MIT program in health sciences and technology, graduating in October 2020. His research was centered on the development of a prototype CT scanner for pre-hospital and rural care. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, Dr. Kramer also studied resp respirator sterilization and helped develop a reuse protocol that was implemented at local hospitals in Boston. In all his spare time, I know you're asking, Dr. Kramer is an enthusiastic rock climber, ski mountaineer, and environmental advocate. Dr. Kramer now works as a polar scientist at New Mexico Tech and anticipates being deployed to Antarctica in October of this year. Tonight, he will share with us his message entitled, COVID and Climate Change, Scientists Role in Crises. Please welcome Dr. Avilash Kramer. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Avilash Kramer, and I am a staff scientist and polar field engineer at New Mexico Tech. In tonight's talk, I'll start by discussing my path from a Westland High School ice effort to my current role. I'll then discuss in detail some of my research conducted at MIT and the Massachusetts General Hospital on the sterilization, reuse, and inspection of N95 respirators. I'll conclude by discussing some of the lessons that I have learned from our coronavirus response that I hope to take forward as my professional focus shifts from the pandemic to the climate crisis. When I was competing in ISEF at 16 and 17, um, I had in the idea that I wanted to pursue a career as a scientist and perhaps even to be a polar scientist, but I didn't really have any idea how one went about doing that, you know, and, and both my parents were PhD scientists as well. Um, so I want to share my story um, of how I, I got to my, my current role, um, in part to give you a little bit of background about who I am, but and also uh, 
to give you a sense of a path that one could take um, towards being a scientist. And I, I don't present uh, the path that I have taken as the best possible path or, or even a particularly good one. Uh, but just to give you a sense of the sort of thing that people do um, pursuing careers in science. So I guess my tale really begins here uh, in 2010 when uh, I was in your shoes competing as an ice effer. Um, high school is a time to make mistakes. And uh, that haircut does not look any better now than it did at the time. Nonetheless, uh, I did well in ISEF. I won the Crest Fair twice. Um, and then my senior year, I also won the State Fair uh, and then won my category at the International ISEF, um, which was environmental management. After that, uh, I finished up high school and went on to study physics at Brown University. Um, so it's me at my graduation with my folks and my grandma. Uh, during my time at Brown, I like to spend the semesters, you know, focusing on my classes, but during the summers, I would work in research labs, uh, first at OHSU and then also at MGH. And broadly, I was uh, finding jobs and, and doing research in labs that were studying applications of engineering and physics to medicine. And part of my interest for that application of, of physics uh, was my experience uh, working as an EMT as well, um, which I did during the semester kind of as a way to make spending money, um, but it ended up being a very uh, impactful and, and very important part of my development and something that I would encourage all of you to do as well. Uh, with those sort of two backgrounds in mind, this, this studying physics, this classical education um, in physics and engineering, and then this practical experience uh, as, as a healthcare provider, I was very fortunate to after immediately after my graduation, um, get a Fulbright scholarship to India, uh, where I worked uh, at an eye hospital in Southern India uh, called Aravind Eye Hospital. Aravind Eye Hospital is famous uh, for their ability to deliver very high quality care to very rural and very impoverished sections of Southern India. And so the work that I did at Aravind Eye Hospital uh, in part was developing tools that were applicable for this sort of rugged environment, um, but also studying uh, the logistics and, and the pathways uh, of setting up camps to treat uh, cataracts and glaucoma when uh, you're driving, you know, three, eight hours down dirt roads uh, and then seeing hundreds and hundreds of patients in the space of a day. And, and, and again, broadly, my, my work at Adavan was focused on the detection of glaucoma uh, which is the second leading cause of blindness in India. When I came back from, actually, even before I left India, I was applying to graduate schools. Uh, and when I came back from India, um, I chose to matriculate at the Harvard MIT Division of Health Sciences and Technology. So HST, um, Health Sciences and Technology, HST is a joint program uh, between MIT and Harvard Medical School. Uh, and in particular, I was pursuing the PhD uh, in medical engineering and medical physics. Uh, this program takes about 20 students a year uh, and has students with very, very diverse backgrounds uh, and very diverse interests. And the way that this, this program is structured um, and the goals of this PhD program are to foster sort of a, a joint curriculum um, and a, a multidisciplinary curriculum. So just speaking for myself, uh, I fulfilled the requirements for an electrical engineering PhD at MIT, uh, but then also had about a year's worth of coursework, um, yeah, of medical school coursework, including three months of rotations, you know, wearing a, a short white coat uh, at the VA hospitals, um, actually assessing patients and being part of people's care teams. Uh, I was also a TA for a couple different classes, so I, I helped teach um, radiation biophysics and a class on infectious diseases. My thesis advisor throughout this whole process was a practicing radiologist, and the work that we were doing broadly was x-ray device design. Um, so building tools uh, for radiology, which is, which is medical imaging. Um, and primarily we were focused on a domain of medical imaging known as CT uh, or CAT scanning. Um, and 
what my PhD thesis was centered on was the development of this prototype device that was a non-rotating uh, CT scanner and one that was much more lightweight and much more portable than the existing technology. So basically my PhD is in making really, really small X-ray devices. Uh, and we hope that the work that, that we've done um, and we published some work and, and actually we have a patent um, for our invention will, will help uh, bring medical imaging and in particular neuroradiologies, the ability to image the brain um, to rural and low-income communities, uh, and then also to spaceflight. Uh, so a lot of the work that we did in developing these, these X-ray sources was done with the Goddard Space Flight Center, um, which is a NASA division centered in Maryland. Uh, and, and our hope is that as we start thinking about these long distance space voyages to Mars uh, and so forth, it would be very, very nice to have non-rotating and lightweight uh, imaging systems. So that was sort of one aspect of my life, um, X-ray device design, science, medicine. Uh, but at the same time, I was trying to live this alternate life uh, as a climber and a skier. Um, basically, I was... Hi there, folks. You might have noticed that we're having some technical difficulties. It's difficult to see the whole PowerPoint presentation that we're trying to show you. If you wouldn't mind being patient with us, we're going to change some settings and we'll be right back in hopefully five minutes.